Let's talk about cyanide poisoning. So cyanide is a mitochondrial toxin and it binds the iron Fe3 plus ion of cytochrome oxidase A3, which inhibits oxidative phosphorylation. This will cause the cell to switch over into anaerobic metabolism, which generates lactic acid. Common sources include house fires, mining, electroplating, uh, iatrogenic causes such as sodium nitroprusside, and also cigarettes. And this can be why uh, people that smoke cigarettes start to lose their vision. An uncommon source for ingestion can include eating the seeds or pits from the rosacea family, such as apples, peaches, and plums. Over half of people can smell a bitter almond odor when they're being exposed to the cyanide. And that can be important because sometimes it shows up on questions. So the clinical features can sometimes be non-specific, but can include headache, confusion, seizures, and because you're not using the oxygen, you might see bright red venules on fundoscopy or cherry red skin. Otherwise, cyanosis and dermatitis can occur as well. Note that the skin findings are less common in real life, but a lot of the exam questions like to ask about this. You can also see arrhythmias and hemodynamic instability, pulmonary edema, vomiting and abdominal pain. There can also be rhabdomyolysis as well as renal failure and hepatic failure. For the evaluation, so this will be based on a clinical a picture of someone that was exposed to a house fire or other cause for cyanide poisoning as well as labs that are indicative of the disease such as elevated lactic acid and the anion gap metabolic acidosis. Regular pulse oximetry will not detect carboxyhemoglobin so you have to use cooximetry and you can detect elevated carboxyhemoglobin usually above 10% is where you start having symptoms. Now met hemoglobin uh, is a uh, it basically will bind cyanide and have a low met hemoglobin level when there is cyanide in the body but if the met hemoglobin level is higher then it may mean that there is no cyanide in the body. And so otherwise you'll want to look uh, at an EKG to assess for arrhythmias and AV blocks. You'll want to look for co-ingestions such as Tylenol and salicylates. You'll want to track the electrolytes and glucose. And in pregnant women or women of childbearing age, you'll want to do a pregnancy test. The cyanide levels can be checked, and usually they are, but the results are too uh, slow. They return too slowly to affect management. For treatment, you'll want to remove the clothes and cleanse any wounds to prevent further absorption of the cyanide. Rescuers will also want to make sure that they're protected against cyanide and specifically do not give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. If there's a low aspiration risk, meaning there's no altered mental status, then activated charcoal can be given. Otherwise, the mainstay of treatment involves giving hydroxocobalamin, which is a precursor of B12. This will bind the cyanide and is excreted in urine. You can also, at the same time, give sodium thiosulfate. And the theory behind this is that it will donate sulfur groups to rhodonese, which is an enzyme that detoxifies the sulfur, and then this is also excreted in the urine. Once you start treatment, your cooximetry values may be affected, and you'll want to monitor for effectiveness of treatment by seeing if the lactic acidosis resolves. For prognosis, if Untreated cyanide poisoning can be fatal within minutes to hours, and if you do survive, the basal ganglia are sensitive to cyanide, so later you may develop Parkinsonism.